This episode of Star Talk is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Hey, YouTubeverse, Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Coming up is an episode of Star Talk where we tackle the science of pop fiction. This is Star Talk. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and this is a Cosmic Queries edition on science in pop fiction. Ooh, what does that mean? I got my resident geek in chief with me, Charles Liu. Charles, welcome back to Star Talk. What a pleasure you're like to such be a here. regular on this show <laughs> because <laughs> there's you. certain categories of expertise that you just plug that hole and we just sit back and enjoy. I live to serve. Thank oh, you for having there me. There he goes. And <laughs> Chuck Nice. That's right. As always, dude. That's right. Always a pleasure to be here, man. All right. So you got we solicited questions. We have science solicited in pop fiction. In pop fiction. So it's pop, movies, pop fiction's what? Television. Uh, you know, maybe comic books. So it could be superheroes. Uh, could be superheroes. Could be just sci-fi. Could be sci-fi. Sci fantasy. Right. All of the above. Yeah. Could, right. I think Whoever's I, putting science in their fiction. We're going to talk about that. That's right. Okay. That's right. I think of pop fiction as the kind of fiction that you would watch while eating popcorn. Okay. So pretty much anything else. Pop fiction. Pop, pop fiction. Popcorn. Okay. popcorn. Yeah. Works for have. me. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So Chuck, what do you have? All right. You can call me Charles if you'd like. <laughs> and okay. you can call me Chuck. Yeah. We're interchangeable. So right, you were Chuck, Chuck in college, yeah. right? Yes. You were Chuck in college? I'm still Chuck now. It's just By the way, I was, I was Chuck, Chuck in high school. Awesome. How? Yes, I was. Yeah. How were you Chuck in high school? I hung out with a couple of friends who noticed that I was always jovial and I- Who, Peppermint uh, Patty? No, it was, it was, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Pig Pen? No, it was, it was they noticed that I, that I chuckled a lot. And so oh. they had their own nickname for me that no one else had. And it was Chuck, which was short for Chuckles. Oh, how cute. Yeah. And that, it ended after high school. All right, Aww. cool. Not oh, that I didn't stop laughing, but no one really cared. Right, right. Wow. And, yeah. and then you became Dr. Hibbert. <laughs> so we really have three Chucks. We're, we're Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Chuck, Chuck, and Chuck. Mm -hmm. How much wood could a wood Chuck, Chuck? All right, here we go. This uh, We always start with a Patreon patron because they support us financially, mm -hmm. and uh, we're whores. So uh, this is from... <laughs> 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 this right. is from Mike Walterit uh, on Patreon. And this is what he says. On shows like the Orville and many others, they often communicate with people light years away. They never explain how they do it. Maybe there's a wire that passes through a tiny wormhole to connect Earth. Uh, what I'm wondering, though, is if they were able to reliably share the same sense of time for the duration of their conversation... Would one of them sound like a chipmunk <laughs> and the other sound like they're in slow motion? What other weird effects might occur? That's a great That's question. That's a really great question. Because, you know, we're so distracted by, well, that wouldn't make noise in the vacuum of space. Right. And this person thinking deep. Yes, he is. About Good. conversations. We have this issue with communicating with the Mars rover. Right. The Mars rover. What's be, the delay on the Mars it's rover? It's on average about 20 minutes. So, is it, so you, you're hello. Like, watch, watch out for the cliff and it's right. too late. So you got to make sure. <laughs> watch out for the cliff. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's why the, the rovers all have some kind of AI on them to right. know where they're headed and and how dangerous it might be, right. regardless of what command we give them. Yeah, you, because we're it's like being it's like having a lousy parent at the <laughs> playground. You know what I mean? <laughs> so let's say so clearly they're communicating with people much farther away than just Earth to Mars. Right. So I'm thinking it's got to be some wormhole uh, channel. Charles, you got a, an opinion about that? In Star Trek specifically, there is this construct called subspace, subspace. Yeah. which transcends regular space and time. And basically anything that happens in subspace, you can just assume works just as if you and I were next door to each other or in the same room. In real time. Yes. But that completely doesn't affect the entire rest of space and time. It's really a, it's a false, convenient. entertaining, convenient construct. It'd be cool if that were the thing, right? Yeah. Right? right, it would. And perhaps someday that will be discussed. But if that were the case. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So, uh, <laughs> so Verizon Fios, eat your heart out. Right. Okay. <laughs> the, the problem, of course, is that if you can have this transluminal communication, you really mess up causality. Mm. You can really have an issue, like let's say I somehow am magically able to tell that Mars rover, watch out for the cliff, in instantaneous time. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the signal where somebody else is watching that rover, it takes 20 minutes for us to see that that rover avoided the cliff. 
And so you're really turning into a strange opportunity to twist what's causing what, who's causing things, and, and all of physics starts to break down under those circumstances. So, so superluminal communication, or faster than light communication, right. is approximately as challenging as faster than light travel, travel to our ability to understand how physics works. But, and, and in fact, this is just the movement of information yeah. has tremendous consequences, very, if very not done so. according to the universe in, in which we have laid down our laws of right. physics. Right. But the, is there a coherent set of laws of physics that will allow superluminal communication and not mess things up? At the moment, no. So let's say- for so We're waiting for someone else to be born. Pretty uh, much. Einstein Jr. Sure. To, That's to, right. take us to, all right, take us to the next step. <laughs> little little That's right. Einstein. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, so the comments about whether or not you sound like a chipmunk or you talk really slowly mm -hmm. is- At low frequency. Yes, you, is you valid. Speak slowly at a high frequency. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you can speak slowly at a high frequency. Sorry. But the idea is- You know my favorite scene ever <laughs> was in, was in, um, uh, in, what's that Riding Hood movie? Little Red Riding Hood movie? Uh, uh, hoodwinked. Uh, hood in hoodwinked. Hood hoodwinked. The chipmunk. No one understood the chipmunk. Uh, the right. chipmunk said, <laughs> and you just think, oh, it's being a cute little chipmunk. Right. And then the detective says, I think I know what's going on here. He records <laughs> the chipmunk, and then, then plays it back it in it slow motion, uh, right. plays it back, and it says, I was witness to what happened. It's the slow, deliberate, low frequency voice That's the cool. translating the, the chipmunk. But right. So that kind of uh, effect is what we call the Doppler effect. Right. right. Especially the Doppler effect for sound. And Neil, you and I understand that very well. Uh, just when we're out on the streets in New York and the ambulance goes by or something like that. No, right? they go the by too slowly to have any Doppler effect at all. That, well, in New York they do. Yeah. <laughs> in Russia. Matter of fact, I in Times stuck Square. In traffic. Right. 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 I always no feel, Doppler effect. If every time I see an ambulance in New York, I'm like, that guy's dead. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck. I'm just saying. It's like sitting at a light for 20 minutes. Woo! Woo! It's behind you. Yeah, nobody and knows and how right. to move. And nobody's <laughs> moving and it's trapped on the street. It's just... All right, sorry. Go ahead. You need yeah. a drones to carry these folks. Uh, right, so if you're going through a wormhole, you're not having these Doppler effects. That's and right. So you're not going to have frequency dynamic, changes or right. anything. If you're close to a black hole, you know, sort of like in the movie Interstellar, uh, you do have things change in terms of light and sound and those kinds of things. But in order to to really predict what's happening in terms of sub, uh, uh, superluminal communications. I think we are well beyond uh, normal science as we understand it now. Mm -hmm. and, and like the Orville, we're totally in fiction. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Hey, Next Mike, one. what a great question, man. Way to go. All right. Let's go to uh, Chris Mangrum from Facebook. So we're done with the Patreons. Yeah, okay. for now, for okay. now, we'll get back to him. You know, <laughs> get back to him. I don't want to. I don't want to be that much of a whore. You know, <laughs> buy me dinner first. No, um, <laughs> come on, man. Here we go. Uh, this is Chris Mangrum who, from Facebook, who says, "Have you ever watched a superhero sci-fi movie that hadn't made you cringe? And if so, what was it? I think that let's frame that positively." Is there a superhero or sci-fi movie that you have watched and appreciated the amount of science that was built in and the uh, the level of science accuracy? Mm. So oh, that, that's really what this, I think, yeah. Chris, yeah, that's right, really yeah. what you're, you're saying. Right. You, you just put a positive yeah, spin I'm putting on the a, same I'm putting it positive mm -hmm. in a positive frame. Yeah. Um, let, well, let's trade off. You're, okay. Give me a movie, and I'll give you a movie, and we'll just and we'll go down the list. Okay. Until we until we cry. All right. <laughs> in, in terms of movies, superhero movies that maybe we can do like how long did it take before I started to cringe or okay. something like that. Okay. Right? Um, the movie that made me cringe least. Least. It was interesting. The 1966 Batman movie. The original no, Batman original no, no, Batman no, not, that's the one we had shark repellent in a spray that's can. Right. That was that's also no, that's not the one. Wait, where no. they where they all became yes. powder? Yes, yes. And then they used the, the heavy water. Yep. They used heavy yep. water to bring them back. <laughs> that's right. That's and right. they went <laughs> <laughs> they <completely laughs> <constitute. laughs> and, and they're identical to each other except they're speaking each other's languages. languages. That's right. That's right. Well, which, by the way, is uh, <laughs> almost as believable as the Tower of Babel. Anyway, go ahead. The reason I I did not cringe at that one is because wait, wait, wait. What fraction of our audience even have seen that movie? Well, you didn't ask. You got to be like question. eighty years old to have seen no, that. No, no. Like the, I know that on college campuses, on many college okay. campuses, there's the annual watching of the Batman. Movie. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Fine. So Holy the, AARP Batman. 
<laughs> okay. We owe me closer to the screen. Huh? <laughs> Robin, I do believe that man stole my walker. <laughs> well, so, so my, so my cringing uh-huh. was okay. I even allowed there to have been shark repellent in a spray can. Yes. Okay, this is pre. But there was bat manta repellent, and there was wait, wait, wait. Bat, uh, so eel repellent, or my, whatever it was. Here's my thing. Mm-hmm. My issue was. How big is his utility belt <laughs> to just always happen to have he, shark repellent? He didn't have the bat shark repellent on him at that time. It was in the vehicle. It was in the bat copter. And the shark was attached to the Batman's leg as he was coming up on the rope ladder. And he said, quick, Robin, hand me the bat shark repellent. <laughs> and so from the right. cabinet and that had the bat shark repellent, bat manta ray repellent, right. bat whatever repellent. Oh, uh, repellent he grabbed for the each bat. kind of yes, bad, right, right. bad aquatic. Uh, it's like a spice rack of repellents. <laughs> <laughs> and he grabbed the thing and then sprayed it. And then they fell down and then exploded. Okay, I thought it right. came from his okay. utility belt. Okay, right. so now explain. So the reason it wasn't cringeworthy for me is because I knew that it was totally Can't goofy be. to begin with. Right. Okay. And in a sense, I prefer movies of that genre that don't take themselves too seriously. Like Mars Attacks. Yes. If they're obviously well, well, messed go. up, then I don't really <laughs> worry too much about how they... What bothers me... <laughs> Yeah. That's Mars Attacks. I'm sorry. Was that really? That's I, my Mars, Mars Attacks. attacks. I, 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 the, the element... Yeah, the, the aliens just say, ah, ah, and they ah, were destroyed ah. only by... Oh, should we spoil the movie? I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know if you should do that. No, let's not spoil the movie, yeah, but it know. turns out something You're completely- You're worried about spoiling Mars Attacks. Yeah, something completely unexpected okay. saves the world. Now the kids have something to go look at. <laughs> Mars, we, go okay. look at a so, kid so, and right. Mars so, so in that vein, right. my movie where I just said, okay, I am leaving all- Reality behind, reality behind good, no matter what. Was Suspending all disbelief. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yes! Attack, Attack of, of the, the Killer, killer Tomatoes! tomatoes. <laughs> all right. Okay. okay, so the tomatoes just jumping and smothering people. Yes. <laughs> and I said, okay. Oh my God, uh, yeah. I'm dying for deliciousness! <laughs> <laughs> it was like, okay, I'll give it to them. Right. right? And, uh, but My only regret is I still don't know if you're a fruit or a vegetable. <laughs> 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 yep. All right. Same kind of genre. Okay. For current actual, say, mm-hmm. Marvel, DC, actual, Disney, for, whatever. For real superhero. Right. For, for, for real. Current, for current universe superhero yeah. things, the thing, the least cringeworthy sci-fi uh, superhero movie that I've actually seen is Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Ooh. And the reason that doesn't cringe me, yeah. is that a verb, to cringe? You just made to, it one. Uh, to, an active verb. I mean, I cringe, but like to cringe somebody. You made it an active verb. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. The reason it doesn't is because it's all magic. Because the premise of the movie is that none it's, of this is science anyway. Or as, say, yeah, Reed supernatural. Richards. Right, right. as yeah, Reed okay. Richards would say on his, you know, the Fantastic Four comic mm-hmm. series, he, he regularly would say, I acknowledge- Show Comic series. Did well, that is the series? only real okay, okay, series. Fine, okay, fine. this cinematic universe stuff, it's that's just, all it's, well it's and good. It's icing on a cake it's all that well was baked good. in that's the right. comic series. We know okay. what the canon mm-hmm. actually comes from. Yes, he acknowledges, he's like the greatest scientist in the world, right? Mm-hmm. But he says, I acknowledge that science, uh, that magic is a science I do not yet understand. He did say that. That's right. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so as a result. So did Princess Bubblegum, by the way. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. And what movie was that? Well, it's not a movie. It's a series. Oh. It's called Adventure Time. I lo- oh, yes. Yeah. Is that the one where they don't have elbows? Yeah, that's Adventure Time. They don't. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. have like little noodle arms. Noodle arms. <laughs> <laughs> like noodle arms, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. But she, so, all she says is basically science. I mean, magic is just science unexplained. Mm. Mm. Or yeah. science you and, don't understand. And of course, as Arthur C. Clarke said, right? Yes. Any, any sufficiently, sufficiently advanced technology, technology is indistinguishable from, from science. Magic. Oh, from magic. So, no, from science. No. Indistingu- any indistinguishable, any, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable, indistinguishable from, from magic. magic. Yes. Good. Magic. Now, I, I don't mean to boast. Ooh. Okay, you can line up for autographs later. Okay. <laughs> but I have a cameo in Sharknado 6. Excellent. And I Do you get play eaten? Merlin. Oh, wait, I can't tell you. I play oh, you Merlin. Ooh. Oh, this is a, uh, the, 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 the plot line takes you back to medieval times. Oh, okay. Okay. I play Merlin. There's a time warp that opens in the vortex. Of course there is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, what and else the sharks, as they go through the vortex, they end up crossbreeding in this vortex with dragons. And so you have shark dragon tornadoes back then. Okay. Wow. Shark dragon nados. And I play Merlin performing 
actual science that everyone thinks is magic. Because nice. you, because you're still a scientist. Because I'm a scientist, right. and that was I was true to my right. my roots. Now you do that. realize that you can say no to these projects. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mom. <laughs> We got to bring this segment to a close. That was a great question. Yeah, I've had fun question. with that one. Yeah. When we come back, more on Star Talk, where we're talking about the science of pop fiction. When we return. If you like science fiction, and who doesn't like science fiction? You've probably seen sci fi fandom communities. Well, Curiosity Stream has an excellent documentary about the subculture of female fans. In Phenomenon, you'll follow a woman behind a group of dedicated fans to John Shepard from Stargate Atlantis. She is on her quest to meet the actor behind the character. Watch as she meets up with other fellow fangirls and see if she gets a chance to meet the man of her team. TV dreams. They also get into the economics of fandom, and you'll be amazed with how much money is spent on these things. Subscribe to Curiosity Stream now to watch. It's just $2.99 per month. And for Star Talk fans, the first 31 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash Star Talk and use promo code Star Talk. You'll get unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series with Curiosity Stream. Sign up now. We're back on Star Talk Cosmic Queries, the science of pop fiction. And we have decided, with the help of Charles Liu, my friend and colleague, and resident geek expert, what, what do we call him? Geek geek expertise. Oh, geek expertise. Yes, yes. He's our, our resident geek in chief. Right. There it is. That uh, these are things you might watch while eating popcorn. Mm -hmm. Pop fiction. Pop fiction. Made in your science oven. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I think popcorn is one of the most extraordinary foods ever. Right. How many things do you say, gee, I want to turn that inside out right. and then, and then eat, eat it? it. Uh, just every cow I see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's just me. <laughs> no, I, okay. All right, technically you're kind of doing that. But just if you look at a, cor a kernel in one instant and then the next instant, it's completely inside out. Yeah. And if you didn't tell someone what had just happened, they would think it's two completely different foods. And we'll see, and that is, that you're absolutely That's right. That's my only point. There's nobody who could look at a kernel and then look at a popcorn right. like flourished right. and say, oh, those are that came from that. And it was specifically designed by nature to be absorbent of butter. <laughs> 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 okay? So it's the perfect food. It is. <laughs> and almost no calories. Right. Oh, yeah, it's all air. Mm -hmm. So, so you, yeah. you got to load up the butter calories. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you... yeah, I tried eating air pop popcorn without butter. It's like, what am I doing? Why I kind of like right. it. No, nah, no. Nah, the question no, is, does lying. it taco? You know, does it what? what? Oh, does it you guys taco? Don't know this? Yes, this is the 21st young generation thing. It, it, can you put this particular food into a taco shell and eat it? Oh, does it actually taco taste good? as a verb? So does yeah. it taco? Right, does, does it, it taco? taco? Yes, does right. popcorn. Oh, taco. taco. Well, popcorn uh, definitely taco. Popcorn fit in anything. Especially if you put a sauce on it. But you know what else? Uh, styrofoam also tacos. Okay. Pop popping. Now, how somebody pee. knows that, I, I don't even want to know. <laughs> do we want to <laughs> ask? Yeah, 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 don't even get it. Do don't go the, there. How do you know the styrofoam <laughs> the, tacos? The, the edible kind. Not, not, oh, the, oh, you mean, not the polystyrene you stuff. You mean the, like, the, 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 the starch yeah, popcorn. the starch-based yes. popcorns oh. that like don't kill you if you eat them, right? Okay, but right. they're not really. Plus, you can put them to, in the toilet and they just dissolve. Right, they're designed yeah. to disintegrate. Right, do they taco? And turns out they do. Yeah, How about that. Nice. Same is true with popcorn. Is you dissolving guys, the same thing as disintegrate? I don't think so. They just dissolve in water. But does d dissolution is a form of disintegration? I'll give it to you. There you go. Okay. Okay. Nicely done, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, these guys make even eating a taco. <laughs> <laughs> that much more exciting. It is to the joy to. of the geekiverse. It, wait, wait, wait. Really but Chuck, how would you know in advance if you're a three year old whether you're eating the polystyrene looking corn, okay. looking corn or the starch looking corn? Um, you, I have the answer to that. When you don't end up in the hospital, <laughs> <laughs> you, they ate the, you ate the right one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the you, stuff Chuck. That biodegrades. Yeah, as opposed Thank to you, the Chuck. stuff that doesn't. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, give us another question. All right, here we go. Let's get back to our queries that come from all over the internet. This is uh, Bella Marani. Bella Marani says, hey, this is Bella? Uh, it's actually all, it's, it's Oh, Bella Marani, one more. Bella Marani is from, uh, yeah, Bella Mariani. 
Oh, Mariani. Bella Mariani. Because Bella Morani is like a uh, beautiful moron. Moron. Right. <laughs> okay. right. right. However, uh, Morani is Swahili for warrior as well. So, oh, but, but not with the Bella on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you All have? All right. Here we go. Uh, hey, Chuck, will it one day be possible for entire societies to disguise themselves in plain sight as Wakanda did in the Marvel Universe? How close are we to developing invisibility technology? So let's get the, the top presentations of that. So you have yeah. the cloaking device on Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. And also one of the James Bond movies with Daniel Craig. Right. I forgot which one it was called, mm -hmm. but it has something called adaptive camouflage. Yeah. So you could park it and whatever it was in front of, mm -hmm. it would bring that pattern to the car and you'd walk by it and you just thought you were looking at a normal scene. Right. So there's that. There was also cloaking in Chicken Little. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Is my cinematic repertoire too large for you? Well, probably so. <laughs> okay. Anytime you're referencing okay. chicken look. The sky is falling. was it's not falling. a real sky. There were hexagonal tiles mm -hmm. that the aliens had put over the earth, ah. and the tile is an exact image of what is behind it. Right. And when a tile fell down, it fell to the ground, and Chicken Little looked at it, and touched it and it immediately became the floorboards. Right. And he put it on the table, it became the table. And nice. so there's five minutes of this movie doing experiments with the hexagonal tile. Sweet. Love it. So basically it's cloaking by not becoming invisible, but by becoming what is behind Camouflaged. It. Camouflage. Camouflage, yeah. perfect camouflage. Perfect so that's camouflage. one kind of invisibility. Sure. Right. And then you have, uh, what, what else? That's unnoticeable. Don't, don't forget. Uh, uh, unnoticeability. Unnoticeability. As opposed to, right. That's good. That's so a, Harry Potter. Charles has Harry invented Potter the words the, today. Oh, the, the covering. I can't take credit for that. Okay, that so the cloak. Yeah. The cloak in Harry Potter. The cloak in Harry Potter. You have the invisible woman, uh, Fantastic Four character, okay. uh -huh. right? Who right. can turn invisible. She can turn invisible. Right. As, as well as the... Uh, the uh, well, there's the invisible the man. Incredibles. Uh, the Incredibles. The original invisible man. The original right. invisible man. And the original and, invisible man. So what gets me is... Just because he's invisible shouldn't automatically mean he can walk through walls. No. Why should it never mean that at all? Who, what do you mean? Yes, of course he did. H.G. Wells, Invisible Man, didn't walk through no, walls. No, no, the movie. He had to walk no, naked no, I'm talking about the, house, the, the guy the, who was wrapped in a thing and they unwrapped it and he was invisible. Yeah, he couldn't walk through walls. He couldn't walk through walls? No. You sure? Not the original I'm Invisible too young Man. for this conversation. <laughs> no, no, no. His problem was also he had to. Oh, no, I know. I'm confusing. I'm confusing with ghosts okay. who go oh, through walls. Yeah. Well, now, why the is it the ghost? Yeah. Why can you walk through walls but not fall into the basement? Right. right. That <laughs> they always leave that out. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. That's. Right. Yeah, why is the floor holding you up but you can but walk but through you walls? Walk walls. Interesting. It doesn't point. make any sense. Yeah. Okay. So who else do we have? Invisible, Invisible woman. Invisible mm -hmm. woman. Yeah. We got the Harry Potter thing. We yeah. got uh, Star Trek, as you already uh, said. Cloaking devices. Right. And then you have the entire city being cloaked, right? Yes. So can we, can we cloak yeah. an entire city? The, the well, answer, in Wakanda, yeah, they, yeah. they well, did that. Um, the answer at the moment is no. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing we can't do a city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm bet going out on a Chuck, limb. Let's bet yeah. on that one. Yeah, we're okay. gonna go out on a limb here. Right. Can't do a city. Chuck, can we cloak a whole city? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 At the moment, the answer is that we can seem to be able to bend light around objects in such a way that the object would not be visible to someone looking at it because all they'd see is the background. And you don't even know the light is bending. That's you right. just see the direction the light comes from at the last point of contact. That's right. That's right. So right. the light can do a full 360, full 360 yeah. 180, doesn't yeah, matter. Right. Mm -hmm. And you look at if all the right. light coherently comes around the object, right? again, you've rendered it um, invisible. That is, at this moment, only doable in the laboratory under very extreme conditions and, and sort of at the subatomic level. Basically. Okay. So. However, Charles, but I thought wait, 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 were, it, I thought the, it, I thought DARPA was working on a cloak like that's that. The kind is, of thing is that it? Is that what? Okay. I'm not authorized to speak any further. On. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but Chuck, here's not a to problem. Speak any further on. The city is sitting on the ground. Yes. You can't bring light from behind the city around it. Right. So it. So that. Technology wouldn't work to hide a city. Right. It would only hide objects in front of other things. Well, in this case, in Wakanda, they had, it right. was a dome that covered the city as well. Right. There was some kind of like force dome mm -hmm. that then cloaked the city. Right. The dome in that case was really just almost a mirror. 
in a sense, it projected upon itself fake oh, pastoral images okay. of goat herders. Okay, and so it didn't disappear. It's, like just a, it's just a it's projection just, screen. It's just a right. projection screen. And then you had to get through it, and then you saw all the marvelous technology gotcha. and so on. Gotcha. Right. Cool. So that, that we can do. We're that already we projecting do. movies onto skyscrapers, aren't we? You don't got me about are. Wakanda. How is it that down in the town, this with all this technology and all this, and all this stuff, mm -hmm. they're still selling woven baskets <laughs> in the street? I, what's, what's up with that? I, I they, believe it's very simple. What? Because they realize they essentially have infinite wealth mm -hmm. and infinite technology. Yeah. What makes them happy? It's not the toys. Baskets. It's <laughs> baskets. <laughs> baskets. <laughs> I totally Straw baskets. get that. I would much rather like make a basket and Look enjoy at the that basket, on this basket than like, you know, point my finger and I have this sort of virtual basket made of vibranium that's gonna, you know, bring I, me I want a peanuts. basket made of vibranium. Yeah. That's what well, I want. I would appreciate that too if it were artistic and beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I, I want a bowl. I, I want an actual bowl. I don't want a basket. <laughs> <laughs> but baskets are beautiful. Yeah, but th baskets that's are the beautiful. point. I think I think that's a it shows a very interesting utopia. Right? Actually, in where, the in where, the song, mm -hmm. there's a hole in the bucket. Dear Liza. Dear Liza. Mm -hmm. well, the solution to that is to repair it with straw. That's right. right. Okay. And I'm thinking, why would straw hold water? <laughs> I was just thinking that when I heard that song. If it's woven tightly enough. That's right. Yeah. You think so? There yeah. are many waterproof straw things that the people before using metal. I was just thinking, used. is there any other way you can plug this hole? Right. Weld. I'm thinking technology, science. And no, let's get straw. Okay. Because <laughs> the straw's right there. I guess so. Because if you got to do the wood, you got to hammer it down or you got to weld the. Okay. I just thought they would have a more that permanent thing. solution than just straw. Right. And there's a hole in the all, bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. All Georgie wanted was to carry a little water from here to there why like bring out vibranium for that and then they said how will i cut the straw and they say with an axe no no That's with a knife either yeah. why do you have to you know yeah i think that the original song has axe an axe yeah Whoa. A little overkill for straw, I think. Yeah. No, that's what i'm saying yeah. the whole song didn't make sense i stopped listening to it okay <laughs> what were you saying chuck the last bit on invisibility then yeah. we'll go to the next question last bit is that i think that when we think about invisibility we want to be able to take it with us the motion of being invisible is more important than just being able to render something not visible from any in, in a static plot. In a static right. plot. Yeah. So, and, and this is the the value that Harry Potter had. That's right. Right. And, and you go wherever the, the cloaking yeah. the cloak is. And so that's really the most important thing right now. The mm -hmm. technology is not just to make something not visible, but to make something not visible as it moves around to everybody yeah. from every point. And from every and, and in fact, the lab experiments you're describing, it is only invisible from one, one direction, one exact direction. Correct. Right. Because the optics only conspire for that point of view, mm -hmm. okay. not from the side. Yeah, nice. that's where we start. Yeah, okay, we'll start there. All right, there you go. Oh, have by it. the way, one other thing. Go ahead. Militaristically, invisibility just means you're not reflecting a radar signal back. Right. Which we already source, have that. It's which called stealth already, technology. Called stealth. Mm -hmm. So that is a kind of invisibility that accomplishes what the, the Star Trek stealth things were doing, right. in, but in a militaristic sense. So, yeah. Right. All right, here we go. Another DARPA project that was, by the way. Stealth was a Darth DARPA? I think so. Nice. Yeah, we can verify that. We got top crack researchers here. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Defense Advanced Research Project. Agency. Are there any other tech? And it was Lock Lockheed that it, did uh, that. I, I, I don't. I, yeah. yeah, I do know it was Lockheed. Mm -hmm. But are there any other technological applications for stealth technology? Uh, that's redundant. But are there any other <laughs> applications for stealth technology outside of absorbing radar that that might that we might find in life? Well, sure. Well, it's not just absorbing radar, absorb all elect electromagnetic right. rays. Yeah. So whatever might be your- Anything you're shooting at it. Shooting it, at it, right, right. right. And also, the, but not all of it, because some of it is, has to do with the shape of the plane, too. Everything has causes, to do with the shape. Yeah, that causes it to, the, the, the to material, flow over. It's the material, the shape. <clears throat> right. Um, the the B-2 bomber, which looks like a bat, you know, bat plane, the shape is because when the radar signal does reflect, it doesn't reflect back to the direction okay. it was sent from. So it doesn't reflect, it deflects. It deflects, it right. deflects. And there are multiple reflections within the physical body. You don't want any of them going back to where it's going. They now have stealth Navy ships. <gasps> and you look at their shape, it's like, oh, that's a funky kind of yeah, shape. Yeah, I've seen them. Right. Yeah, they're very cool looking. Yeah, and the, and the masts have certain shapes. Right. So just to minimize and reduce the radar cross-section. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's just like, oh, it's a... It's a it's a lost whale, and it's just like why is that lost whale shooting a torpedo at us? <laughs> <laughs> 
Cool. Yeah. All right. Next. All right. Here we go. This is um, Yusol Lopez. Uh, What's the first name? Yusol. Yusol. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or mm-hmm. or Yusol. Well, I mean, Usul was is the it, name of the is character. Is it Jesse or Jussie? Uh, <laughs> Usul was the name of the character. Usul the character in, the, in Dune by Frank Herbert. It was the nickname given by the Fremen to Paul Atreides. Damn. Usul. Damn, you John. are too good, Chuck. Damn. I'm telling you, Damn. man. Uh, we are unworthy. Yes. We are unworthy. I, I saw the movie. The book was too thick for me to read. Oh, and yeah, I saw the movie really? in the 80s. I was, yeah, I saw the movie first. I gotta tell you, I didn't book. read the book, and the movie was too damn long. So. <laughs> the movie should have been longer. What, what I like was they have their language translator, mm-hmm. where they it's just thing you put in front and you speak, and yeah. out the other side. Right. But now our iPhones do that. So I know. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty wild. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. This is what uh, Yusel or Yusel Lopez says. Uh, this is specifically for you, Neil, but I'd like to know what Chuck thinks about uh, <laughs> okay. the answer should be. Uh, so a couple episodes back, there was a reference to the bat signal, and a guest jokingly mentioned that Neil should have a Neil signal. I'm curious, <laughs> Dr. Tyson, what would your Neil signal in the night sky be? Oh, that'd be Ooh. that's easy. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, we already have one of these. There's a, uh, there's a <clears throat> web page on Amazon that sells sanctioned t-shirts right. that are designed by fans but inspired by my work or my words or my image. Okay. But it's all sanctioned and the fans get a fee and everything. Everybody's happy. And one of them is just simply a silhouette of my hairline right, and a mustache. <laughs> that's it. That's the Neil signal. And, I, and that's, that's kind of me. Right, right. I got this sort of widow's peak. You got a thing. Right. You, right. very Eddie Munster. Your hair. <laughs> no, but, but the Eddie Munster came to a point. Right. Mine no, is yours just, is natural though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so it's a, um, and I think when I see that, I think of myself abstracted. So then you you want a simple I, iconography for right. the bat signal. So the Neil signal, in case you get stuck in an argument with a flat earther and you need help, <laughs> you just send up the hairline and the mustache. And, the mustache. <laughs> and, 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 Dr. and Dr. Tyson will not show up to your house, so, <laughs> but he'll solve the argument for you. Yeah, yeah you That's go. cool, man. Yeah. All right, Chuck, what would you think it would be? I think it would be a ball in a box. The iconic structure of the Hayden Planetarium at oh, the Rose, Rose Center, Center for, for Earth and Space. Ooh. See, How your wobble. silhouette is great, but it's a little too detailed. No, what a little bit should... of a little bit of clouds, and you look like Bozo the Clown. Yeah, you're so right. So you have right. to have basic shapes that are immediately recognizable. And when we and look, if we do that, uh-huh. so it's the, it's the because the Rose Center for Earth and Space is a glass cube yep. and a ball, ball inside, inside containing the Hayden Planetarium. Correct. Yeah. That iconography would mean. If I'm not available, we get some of our other staff. There you go. Tremendous. It's just that you need an astrophysicist to help settle your argument. It doesn't have to be me. I don't have unique knowledge in this world. Now now I'm going back to the hairline and the mustache. (laughs) What? what? Because you know somebody's just like, let's call Neil. And they put up the ball in the box, right? And all of a sudden, like, you know, just some intern shows up. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Hey guys. Hey, guys, what do you need? (laughs) But we got badass interns, let me just say. No, you do. This is true. All right. Nah. All right, but I like the ball in the box. Yeah. Very, very, very thoughtful. All right. All right, Chuck, what's the next question? Okay, here we go. Um, this is Daniel J. Lay. And he says, this is for Chuck and Neil. What superpower would you like to have that could be theoretically enabled by gene editing? Ooh. Ooh. Good one. Ooh. Very x I mean, very uh, X-Man. Yes. On that one. I have an answer, Chuck. Do you have an answer? I do. We don't have time to give it. Oh, <laughs> we got to go to a break. <laughs> All right, we'll go to break. We'll take, take a break. And when we come back, Chuck and I will argue about what genes we will edit to try to get some kind of superhero uh, uh, future superpowers mm-hmm. when Star Talk returns. This episode of Star Talk is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Star Talk, you're back. Tyson here. Chuck Liu there. Chuck Nice there. <laughs> Charles Lou Chuck Nice. And Chuck Lou Charles Nice. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you're, you tweet, don't you, occasionally? At Chuck Lou. At C-H-U-C-K-L-I-U. See, he does use Chuck. L-I-U. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck Lou, L-I-U. L-I-U. Yeah. It's just because Charles Lou is already taken. So. Oh, that's too bad. Well, no, it's actually better. It reminds me of my college roots. Okay. Yeah. All right. And and you are? At Chuck Nice Comic. Chuck Nice Comic. It's my name and what I do. You actually have to tell people you're a comic. Well, you know, I'm that not that That means your good tweets at. were not good. I'm not that good at it. <laughs> just, just in case you forgot. <laughs> it's like, what yeah. is this tweet? It, oh, he's a comedian. Right. Oh, by the way, it was originally Chuck Nice Black Comic, but I figured, okay, one of them is... 
they'll figure it out. <laughs> he also has another tweet. Uh, he also has another Twitter handle that he doesn't publicize so much. It's at Chuck Nice Go Go Dancer. Is that right? Uh, no, that's not right. Okay. <laughs> sorry. No, I thought I saw that. That was you. That oh. was just for you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so read this question again. Okay, we, we so left right before we went to the break, uh, Daniel J. Lay asked a great question for Neil and Charles. What superpower would you like to have that could be theoretically enabled by gene editing? Okay. Ooh. Chuck, you go first. Charles, you go okay. first. I would say, and I know this might seem a little goofy, but with gene editing, the best thing that I could hope for for myself is that my genes make it so that I will stay as mentally and physically in perfect health as long as I want. It's not a superpower. It is. Immortality. But it's healthy immortality. And superpower so is somebody's in distress and you go help them. Yes. Yeah. If I am and he's immortal, like this. I'm going to stand here and watch you. <laughs> watch you die <laughs> while, while, I, live while I live forever. <laughs> no. it, if, Charles. If I am immortal, then I will have the opportunity to learn all the medical technology, all of the information over the centuries and the millennia. And that way, I will be able to help people, not by being some crazy guy wait, wait, in a costume. Medical but, knowledge over the centuries includes like bloodletting yes. and this sort of thing. Well, and it depends on whether that bloodletting is worth keeping or not. Okay. Right? But for example, these days, medical people actually use leeches yeah, to no. help get rid of hematomas. Yeah. Get rid of bad blood. That's right. Right. Uh -huh. So I excuse just- me, hematoma, yeah. excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, want to, I want to make it so that I have great value to society without my having to stand out as some sort of a, a, a beacon or a flag post. Okay. Does that make sense? So I think no, that is but, a true, right. I think it's a tremendous Okay, superhero. Charles, no one is making a movie about that. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Oh, well, there was The Fountain. It's The Man Who Reads. The Fountain. Fountain of Youth. Yeah, yeah okay. that was the one that Darren Aronofsky put together, yeah. starring uh, Hugh Ackman and Rachel Weisz. Hugh Ackman. Yeah. yeah. That's the brother of Hugh Jackman? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, Niels, what was yours? So Charles so, is going to live forever. I've thought about this, actually. And if gene editing is what is allowed, because the X-Men stuff is, is extreme. Yeah. You're not going to edit your well, genes and, and spit fire. That's right. not going to happen. But- what you're allowed to do is ask the animal kingdom, what are the things that are exhibited in all the animals of the world? Because we all have DNA in common. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say, give me some of that. Okay. Animal man. So what I would do is I'd say, give me genes that a snake has where I can open my mouth five times bigger than my head. So I can finally eat <laughs> so can, the sandwich at the deli. <laughs> Pastrami sandwich at the deli. Okay, but that's not a superpower. That's just, that I want to throw that in there. Just for that. Okay. Right, okay. Um, snakes can detect in, in Infra infrared. Okay. okay. Insects can see deeply in the ultraviolet. Right. Which is why bug zappers work, because they're ultraviolet. And they said, I got to go to the ultraviolet. And then they die. So I want to be able to see infrared, <laughs> see ultraviolet also. I want to be able to gene edit other people so that I can help regenerate the limbs of veterans who lost limbs defending this country. Cool. And newts can regenerate can, limbs. Right, exactly. Humans can't. It is in the genome of the tree of life to regenerate limbs. And so I want to be able to have that to then impart that in fellow humans, and so that everybody gets their limbs back. That's for me. That's I, I, it's not a superpower, but it's a power that I think would be greatly valued. Being able to regenerate limbs. That's I mean, that's a pretty good no, power, yeah, right? It's yeah. a great power. And, right. and again, no one's going to make a movie out of that, but people will <laughs> take a look and what you you explained well, that I, no one make a movie out of my power. It's true, but notice that the two of us were thinking about powers that like. Help don't like humanity. Yeah, don't like turn us into like these these mm -hmm. godlike creatures, right? right? That that do stuff to people, but rather that allow us to be part of the society that matters. Because that's sort of, in a sense, that's kind of what what the impulse of science is. I don't know. Did you? Yes, you I agree. I mean, that's that's what we're thinking about. Right. 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 And and right. I, if there's a way to think about superpowers, maybe that's the best way to do it, where we can create. The powers, you know, we, we have these folks going out and fighting cosmic you know, villains or anything like that. But why not take some of that wonderful technology and heal people? Like in Black mm -hmm. Panther, for example, when um, the Black Panther's sister saves the life of that mm -hmm. gentleman that was working with them. 
you know, their super technology was being used for good and, and used for a societal benefit. That's the mm -hmm. kind of thing we do. Well, I'm going with super strength and sprouting wings like a beetle so that I don't have wings all the time because, you know, that probably get on my nerves when I'm trying to sleep. Oh, so you want wings that tuck in that under an tuck exoskeleton. Tuck in under an exoskeleton, <laughs> pop out when I want to fly, and then super strength. And by the way, I'm not helping anybody. I'm going on a life of crime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be a super villain. I'd be a super villain, yeah. without a doubt. And then you guys could figure out a way to stop me. You right. would be yeah. like called Kafka Man. Kafka man? Yeah. No, that was, a, that was a cockroach, not a beetle. You don't think so? What? In, in, in Kafka, Kafka well, that was a cockroach. Oh my gosh. Well, that wasn't a beetle. That's your interpretation. Excuse me, that was a cockroach, wasn't it? The I don't know Kafka. Man. I thought I read that Kafka. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read the story. It's a short story. <laughs> oh, I didn't By read Franz Kafka. Yeah. No, I don't think. No, Everybody don't, read that story. No, I don't believe I have. I thought you were should... an educated man. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, Chuck a... how can I fight? I'm trying to fight you, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to agree with that. <laughs> it, it's an abstract commentary on the dehumanization of of man. Okay, I'm going to read it tonight. Metamorphosis. The metamorphosis. Definitely read it. It's short. It's a short story. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, but yeah. you read it in like ninth grade, Chuck. right? Okay. Okay. I probably read it and don't even know that I read it, to <laughs> okay. be honest. Okay, well, there right. you have it. Mm -hmm. All right, listen, that was interesting. That was interesting. All right. Oh, wait. So a guy goes to bed and he wakes up as a cockroach. And, he, and his as thoughts. A don't make me. <laughs> uh, as his, and he has thoughts about what that means. And oh, it's just okay. kind of a, it's and, a meditation. And the reaction on, right. of his family members to him. Yeah, it's a meditation on, on a... On the thing, on right. on right, on it's an existential story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that exactly. That, that, okay. that questions. What is your life? I get it. All right, here we go. Um, let's go to Vaughn Murray. Uh, actually, um, he is a Patreon patron. Ooh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, Sorry that it took this long to get to your question. Oh, okay. oh, oh, oh that wasn't right. <laughs> All right, Vaughn. Here you go. This is what he says, dear Star Talk experts. And Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's cold. That was cold. Oh, oh that that's was cold, cold, man. Why you got to do that, that's bro? That's cold. Yeah, why you go there like why that? Why you got to do go oh, there? Yeah. Damn, treat me like I'm cop command. <laughs> All right, here we go. My friend and I got into a space discussion about future starship design. Mm -hmm. Sci-fi franchises like to make use of the simulated gravity on starships and space stations mm -hmm. by way of centrifugal Force or mm -hmm. centrifugal rotating force, section. which is a rotation section, uh, in a in in a habitat section. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know what they are. Okay, uh, um, uh, as early as earliest evidence in what was it, two thousand one, a space odyssey, yeah. right? Okay, would it be realistic to use this idea for long term space travel? So, yep, yep, yep. Okay, next there you question. Go. And next question, <laughs> Vaughn. The there's is, your answer. But point is, the point is, it works. All this research on the medical effects of zero G. Mm -hmm. None of which would be necessary if our long-term spaceships had rotating, rotating habitats. Right. And you don't have to be in there 100% of the time, but you go in there to get your sea legs back, mm -hmm. you know, and you lift weights, right. you do whatever. And, and your bone density stays, bone the, density same. stays the same. Everything, because you're, so now on. how fast would I have to spend to uh, to give you one G? It depends which on the radius. Where we are. It depends on the radius. So the radius Entirely. Of this, so you'd have to, so the smaller the radius, the faster, the faster it has to spend. Correct. Right, and the so larger you, the radius, the so slower it can go. you want to make it as big as, as possible. As big as possible. Right, and remember in space, since there's no air resistance. Wait, right? why do you have to make it as big as possible? Who cares? Oh, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Oh, if it's small, then your in, inner ear has issues with oh, the rotation. Oh, if it's small, if if you are large relative to the size of right. the thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying if it's still big relative to you, yeah. right. then the size doesn't, the size matter. doesn't right. matter. Doesn't but matter. But it's got to right. get to that size. But I'm sure there's a particular size that's going to give you the one G, right? No, for, no. For your any, size. Any size. In fact, do this, right? Go ahead. Take a bucket of water and swing it fast enough over your head so that right. it doesn't fall it, out. It, that's one, one that's, G. That's no, no, one. it could be zero G. It could be... It could be weight right. up there. It doesn't have to be one G. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I take that back. Right. right. Sorry. Bad bad okay. example. No, 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 you're right. But but I'm just saying that's what happens on a roller coaster right. when you go. The, yeah, yeah. You go you're, you're, you're weightless you're at the top. Weightless at the top. Right. right. The relevant formula is that it's centripetal. Oh no, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. This would work. This would work. V squared over. No, 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 no. Watch. This would work because uh -huh. if it is zero G at the top and it's not falling out, right? That would be one G if I were in zero G. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you lost no, me. No. Man. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. But so the force up is now counteracting the force, force down because we're doing this experiment in one G. 
Right. When so you, the cancellation, it, so it that is 1G. That's, in, that's where zero that's G, G, G the thing. In but space. in space, it would be 1G. 1G. In space. Okay. Right. So yeah. the point is, it's not hard to figure out the speed. Right. By the way, you wouldn't even need 1G. You can do 8.8G. 8 you right. can get ready for the next planet you visit. Mars is point. 38% yeah, so you gravity. Can, you can change the rotation to get accustomed to being on Mars. It can oh. be a very fun, interesting yeah. exercise. Right. It, the okay. equation is that centripetal acceleration equals velocity squared divided by the radius of rotation. Okay. So all you do is measure how far, how far it is. And then how, fast that, that's how fast you have to Push spin. It. It and by the way, I did the calculation for the rotating section in 2001. Ah. Okay. okay. And they rotated that three times too fast. Really? Yes. So people were really bulking up? No, 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 no. So it was a heavy gravity space station. They were getting ready to get to Jupiter. No, no, here's the thing. Okay, they surely knew what speed it would have to be to be 1G. Right. It was already rotating slowly. Right. So it was bo it was too boring for the too camera. Too boring for the That's camera. That's really what it is. It's too you boring for the camera. You want it to be stately, but still doing right. something. So this rate, so where they match the rotation of the shuttle right. to go into the station, that's 3G. Right. And I said to myself, if you slow this down by a factor of three, you're not doing whatever, anything. Three, whatever the number is, you, you're you, you got a terrible bo boring it's a, shot. It's a slow boring movie. Right. So I gave it to him. Yeah. Okay. Gave it to him. Oh, All right. Oh, yeah. Well, I just thought that they were trying to get some extra no. <laughs> resistance work in, you know, while they were heading to the moon. Oh, that's cool. All okay. right. Next question. All right. That was a, actually a really cool question. Mm -hmm. All right. Even though. All right. Here we go. Ooh, Greg Vaughn. We went from Vaughn Murray to Greg Vaughn uh, coming to us from Instagram. This. Oh, wait, wait. One other thing. Go ahead. Sorry. Before we get back Sorry. We get to the G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't have rotating sections, then you need to invent something that shuts off gravity. Right. And we know of no such thing. Okay. okay. We're not even close to knowing so, such a so thing. When that, so in any, any sci fi film where they go, uh, enact artificial gravity, it's just. In, in other words, they're saying, enact the BS. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on the BS so that we don't float, so that we don't float around. Now, I don't mean to boast. Captain, the BS is not working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to boast. Go ahead. But I had a cameo in Ice Age 5. All right. <laughs> Wait, and in that Ice is Age definitely 5, not a boast, the sir. Scrat, or that, that, that little, that little, uh, that little uh, uh, squirrel-looking thing, squirrel chip monkey thing. Right, he's on a ship. There's a scene. It's like a throwaway scene. It's not re relevant to what's going on down on Earth. But he accidentally hits the gravity changer uh -huh. knob because right. he's just accidentally doing stuff. Right, and there's like a scene where there's like 20 g. And he's flat on the ground, and he can't. He's lifting up his top jaw, and he can't. I mean, they're very creative about how it would be in the high, and as you change the G's. Oh, but anyhow, I just want to say, I love that. That's funny. Yeah. That's great. So, guys, we've got only one minute left. Ooh. Chuck, you got a fast one. Okay, here's go. The fast one. Greg Vaughn uh, wants to know this: Is there a real quantum realm? Oh, that's a reference to Ant Man. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. it is. Can you shrink down so, so far, far that you have a whole new universe, which like doesn't follow the laws of anything and get trapped in there for decades and things like? Well, that? there is a quantum realm. The question is, can you function as a normal person in a quantum right. realm? The answer is you can't, of course. <laughs> Why oh, you gotta be course. like that? No, well, no, no. Why can't. you gotta be like that? But the bottom line is, yes, there is such a thing as a quantum realm. There is. We can actually do something in it. Completely different story. Right. So the Tompkins in Wonderland series. Do you, did you know the Tompkins in Wonderland? No. Written by George Gamow. Oh. So George Gamow wrote a series, a famous physicist, okay. a mid-century, 20th century Helped physicist. Helped to figure out the theoretical underpinnings of the Big Bang Theory. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, made the first prediction of the cosmic <laughs> microwave background. And he said it would be five degrees, and it turned out to be three degrees, the wow. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did he know? <laughs> What a loser. <laughs> George is rolling in his grave. Way to, way to go, Neil. All right. Okay. That's... So anyhow, the uh, so he had a series of stories where he changed the physical constants of nature mm. in those stories. Mm. So in one of them, the speed of light was 60 miles an hour. Wow. So then you are driving down the street, and then he describes how things change. That's cool. And another one, you can change Planck's constant. Oh. Nice. And so then as you the walk, quantum realm the quantum changes. realm changes. So you walk through a door, and you diffract right. walking through a door. All the things that happen to particles right. happen, happen to, to you. you. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. That's very cool. And so, but Ant-Man, I think it, they had to make up a bunch of stuff 
in order to yeah. to let that story roll. Yeah. But I'm glad they use the word quantum. Yeah, that's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they almost use it right. Almost, they use it right <laughs> enough to get you to go see the movie. Exactly. It, it shows that they have some some, some concept, concern, right. some, some concern, concern for this, and um, more broadly, the Marvel universe, as we know, many of those superheroes were once scientists. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, uh, Dr. Banner, right. uh, even S Spider Man, he was right. in his science class. Right. Well, they all they all screw themselves up while they're doing an experiment that goes horribly <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that sci science matters there in ways that it doesn't seem to matter in the DC universe. Okay. So ooh. Ooh, 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 blood drawn. Damn. All right, we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> Start talk, Chuck, uh, Charles Lou, thanks. As My always, pleasure. for Thank being on so the show. Much. Chuck Nice. Always a pleasure. My man. You know it. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. We are signing off Star Talk. As always, I bid you to keep looking up. Thanks to Curiosity Stream for supporting this episode of Star Talk. Are you a sci fi fanatic? Then you got to watch Phenomenon on Curiosity Stream. They look at the legions of women that make up a huge subculture in the sci fi fandom community, learn about a journey to meet a TV hero, the friendships made along the way, and the astronomical amount of money spent to fuel fandoms. You can watch it for just $2.99 per month. And if you go to curiositystream.com slash star talk and use code star talk, your first 31 days are free. Go there right now with over 2,400 documentary features and series to enjoy. It is a great deal.